Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have joining us from Switzerland, Johnny Borga. Did I get that right? How close was I? Yes, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. This is going to be a whole lot of fun. Uh, so for, for folks who are not familiar with your work, do you want to give us a little bit of a background on yourself? Okay, so um, until recently, I like pretty much worked on like a few apps that I guess are not so much known. So um, I've been trying to bring out like my own apps. I did like a sticker app and like an app which is pretty popular here in Zurich for students, but um, um, not many people know about it. And um, also like one thing that I was always passionate, passionate about was um, making these videos and motion graphics. Also, mm. I could like make videos to to advertise my uh, my apps, and so like about a month ago, I launched um, Remotion, which I would say is my biggest hit yet, um, <laughs> which allows you to make videos in React. Yeah, yeah. So this is a really cool concept that um, I'm I'm excited to learn about it because honestly, I, I don't even know how it works right like my brain isn't wrapped around how you would take react code and turn it into a video so i'm 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 really really interested but i but before we talk about the how i'm kind of curious about the why what um so when you started looking at this project what got you thinking that that react was a good platform for making video yes that's a great question so um i i used to make all my animations in after effects um the adobe program and um so i mean it works well you can like um, do everything with a, with a cursor and edit everything but um let's say you have like um elements that you want to reuse mm -hmm. um after effects has this um concept concept called composition and you can copy paste the layers um, which works, but then if you want to change something in a composition, it's not like a React component where you change it once and it applies to all the instances. It like makes a literal copy. And then if you want to, if you make 40 copies and you want to change one thing, it's completely busted and you have to adjust all the compositions mm. yourself. And I was just so used to React because I'm also a developer. And I said, you know, it should work like React. And uh, in the end, I ended up um, creating a program to make videos in React. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, the the chat is asking if if you don't mind either moving your mic a little closer to your face or uh, or speaking just a little bit more loudly. I, I think the problem okay. is is I have my mic all compressed to hell, so I can I whisper and it's real loud. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, that's it, way better. Is it better now? Okay, wow. <laughs> it's great. Oh, and I also want to open. Uh, I also want to open the chat, actually. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a great call because would, the would, the would chat. Cool. One of my favorite things about this show is the chat. It is a uh, an absolutely wonderful group of people. They are delightful, and I'm so happy to see so many familiar faces. I see Humana out here. I see Chucky out there. Uh, Rg Ar Argil Simo is like, well, what's up, y'all? Good to see you back, Linda. Um, so I am I am particularly excited today because. Video is something that I love. You know, I, I've done a lot of little one-off things with video. I've made silly stuff like I made this this goofy little overlay for the the chat where you can kind of see my my goofy face walk out over the top of it, and then it it um, oh, you know wow. this this is like a little After Effects thing that I made, right? Um, and the the transition between scenes on here that's another thing that I I kind of pieced together in After Effects without actually knowing how any of it works. Um, I'm just basically just kind of flailing around between tutorials. So having something that might make me more competent at making videos by virtue of using the skills I have is really appealing to me. It's something that I see a lot of potential in and a, and a lot of fun um, that we can we can really get into. So how I, I have one just kind of practical question, which is how how does this work under the hood? So I, I know how React components work. And I know how to make videos, but I'm not sure how you're you're doing the transfer between the two. Okay, so um, okay, first of all, this sounds like great. Sounds like you're gonna have a <laughs> lot of fun, um, and it's like great that you already know a bit how to do such a thing in After Effects. 
Um, that's going to help a lot. Um, and so how it works, the basic idea is that um, you you get a frame from Remotion. Remotion tells you what is the current frame okay. via a hook, and it's your responsibility to render anything. Um, and then, of course, if you have a lot of still frames, then it uh, animates to a video. Then mm. during the render process, we use uh, Puppeteer to make basically a whole lot of screenshots. And in the meanwhile, we have like optimized it so that it does like 10 screenshots in parallel, for example, okay. to make it um, decently fast. And uh, then we stitch it together using a tool called FFmpeg. Um, okay. So that, that's like one thing that you will have to install, install I, first. I think I have it. it. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll find out, I guess. <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah, basically just make a lot of still images by screenshotting and then add them together to a video and you will see it works really well. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Okay, so so let's, I, I just want to see this in action. So let's switch over and let's, uh, let's take a look here. So what I want to do is I want to first tell everyone to go and follow you on Twitter. Um, you've got a lot of really interesting projects that you're working on. I think this this Remotion is, you know, as you said, it might be your 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 biggest hit, but it's definitely not your the only thing you've built. So make sure you go and check that out. Um, also, this is the library. Remotion.dev is what we're what we're working with today. Um, plank Plankalol. I don't have an uptime command. I maybe I should, but we we're just getting started here. We're about uh, we're about ten minutes in, so you haven't missed anything yet. Uh, you'll probably want to go back and see some of the motivation and and all that stuff. But otherwise, we're in good shape. And before we get too deep, I want to do a quick shout out. Uh, we have Rachel from White Coat Captioning with us today. She oh god, stop. Oh no, mute the tap. There we go. Okay. Whew, I always forget when I do that. There we go. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this is the the site where look at this. We've got this live captioning. Um, that's thanks to Rachel and white coat captioning is is with us every show. You can always go to the site homepage learnwithjason.dev to see those live captions. Those are made oh, wow. possible. So is, she, is she like typing it in like she directly? is? Yeah, as as we no speak, way. she is. Yeah, it's amazing. I um. The, like one of the one of these days, I feel like what? I I just want to figure out how transcription works because it's um I don't know I actually don't know how how Rachel does it but like I've seen some transcription get done with a like a stenographer's keyboard so it like you play chords to uh to make sounds and it it like it's amazing it's really 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 cool stuff um a whole like it's it's such a cool Google like it's a Google rabbit hole to go fall down. Um, definitely go go check that out. But that wow, that's fastest typer ever. Uh, now <laughs> I feel bad if I speak too fast. Um, but yeah, so this this is all made possible through the generous support of our sponsors. So we've got Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Hasura all kicking in to make this show more more uh, accessible to all of us, which means a lot to me. I hope it means a lot to you, and uh, I hope that it is helpful. So remember, you can go find that on LearnWithJason.dev. Now, with that being said. Uh, Johnny, if I want to do this, if I want to like get started with my first video, where should I, what should be the first thing that I do? Okay. So, the, so it's quite cool. You can type into the command line, yarn, create video. So yarn, no space, way did create, you get... space, video. And, uh. Yeah, we, we recently uh, sped it up, I, I would say. Um, not, previously, you had to like download a whole copy of Puppeteer, like 200 megabytes. But now it will use the Chrome instance that you have on your computer, although Ooh. it looks like you're using Firefox. That's cool. Um, well, yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> you can test it out if it works, um, even if you are a Firefox user. Um, um, I have and both Firefox it's... and Chrome, so I think it should be okay. So let me get in. Let me get in here and let's let's fire this thing up and just take a look at what we've got. So here is. Let's see, that's in the wrong window. So let's put it over here. Um, so let's take a look. In here we've got our 
package JSON. So we can see a remotion suite of things. We've got some types. So this is TypeScript. Yes. Okay. Um, I wanted to force like TypeScript on everybody, but uh, recently it, uh, I also added support for like plain JavaScript. Although okay. the template is uh, all all TypeScript. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's that's very cool. Uh, we've got some start commands, and and I assume this is just like ready to roll. So if I run yarn start, I can I can take a look at the default. Yes. All right. Let's see what happens. What? Don't act like you don't know what yarn is. I literally just ran yarn. Come on. Oh no. Come on, uh, son. Uh, NPM start maybe. <laughs> what? Okay. All right, computer. You're I really swear just gonna. I like, no post install script that like removes yarn. <laughs> 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 it must be something with uh, with. <laughs> <laughs> At least nobody has complained about that. <laughs> yeah, geez, who knows? That was... What are you doing, computer? Why? Why are you like this? That is exactly how I feel about that. Um, okay, so I'm already... I'm already... I didn't think that this is what I was going to be looking at. I thought I was going to be looking at the final video. So, so the fact that this is like a scrubber um, where I can, I can bounce back and forth and kind of like see... Anything in this? Oh, this is really, really cool. Okay. Yeah. So there's like um, two different modes. Like with normal uh, React developing, you have like the development development mode, yarn uh -huh. start. And if you want to make the video, you can run npm run build or yarn run build, and okay. then it will make the video. Okay. So let's make a video, and we're gonna see if I have ffmpeg installed. I think I do. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not yelling at us at least. Okay. Um, so yeah, now it's uh, doing a lot of screenshots. Yep. 4x concurrency. That's, that's cool. Oh, it didn't yes, like um, library oh, not loaded. So okay. I see. So now you don't have. D Y L D. Like an FFmpeg problem. Okay, we can fix that. So if I want to do that, I just uh, is this a FFmpeg something I can brew install? Um, yes. Yeah, I should be able to do brew install FFmpeg. I feel like if it's... you just type in FFmpeg, does it um would be interesting to wonderful see question if, uh, that works. Uh, yeah, I, well, I've, I've, I've started this now. Okay. <laughs> I, I hope, hopefully going to resolve it. Yeah, well, we will find out. Um, and I guess, you know, worst case, wait, already installed. Once you start a brew command, it just kind of, it's like one of those dominoes where, you know, thing one is. You watched a reality show, and the the last domino is like toppling Western democracy. Um, so let's see here what version I have. Dyld library not loaded. Okay, so now we get to do a little bit of debugging to figure out why that is happening. It's interesting. So it says something like apt. Is it like um, are you like running on Linux or something? Not that I'm aware of, but that uh, <laughs> doesn't mean it's not happening, I guess. Brew upgrade node? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, really? Here we go. OK. Do I need to use like node 14? Wait, I'm on NVM. Hold on. We're not doing that. Get out of here. NVM use 14. OK. Now, if I run FFmpeg version, still doesn't like it. OK. So upgrading node doesn't make any sense. No, I also don't think. Um, brew update, brew upgrade, maybe? That will help you. Yeah. Um, 
I also don't know um, how you can even like get a messed up version of FFmpeg. That is, um, so, so this is... I don't is... have like any experience to, to fix it, but... To brew update first run. See, something is wrong. Like I have, I have done something incorrect here. How is this a shallow clone? Like, what have I done? Um, everybody get ready, cause I'm gonna do bad stuff. Oh, so no, that didn't work like, either. There are always like a few backup things we can do. So you can commit it to a GitHub repository. You can store your video in Git, and I can render it for you. <laughs> or, uh, there's also like a a, a Docker file, um, which uh, if if you build it, it's like a Docker server, and then you can send like send an HTTP uh, request to it, and so like you type in the the URL in your browser, and then you get served back the video, um, and that will uh, probably work. Um, also, there's like a cool thing where uh, we have like included a GitHub a GitHub workflow YAML file. So if you commit this to GitHub and then there will be a button activated on GitHub where you can render the video on GitHub. Okay. And then Let's... it will like... Um... Okay, so I'm going to create a new public repo. And we're going to remote origin already exists. There's no way that remote origin already exists. It created. Oh, wait, you are using uh, Apple Silicon. Is, is this the, the thing? Um, am I? I'm using Catalina. No, no. I mean, do you have like one of the new, uh, M1 Apple Silicon. I I don't know. This Apple. is this is an old one actually, um, and I've run FFmpeg on this computer before, which leads me to believe that I have done something silly. That uh, that brew error has me very concerned that I have broken my homebrew install, um, which is oh, no. And, and like the the yarn the yarn thing was also really strange if you if you think about it. Yeah, all of that is weird, right? Like everything about this seems like something has gone horribly wrong, which is uh, exactly what I want to find out when I am going live in front of a whole bunch of people. So let's try, let's see, like maybe it'll just work in code. Nah, nah, that would have been too easy. Can I run brew update from here though? No. Updating shallow clones is an extremely... Like, who did this? Unshallow. I'm also confused as to how I got, like, truncated commands here. Because before, it, it changed that to, like, unshallow. Like, it just took... Did that run? That did run, right? It's running. Okay. So, in the meantime, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to first... See if this actually got created. So let's go open this repo. Yes. And then in another tab here, I'm going to get remote and look. Oh. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to get room, get add all good. And then we're going to get commit. Um, set up the example, and then we will git push origin main, oh wait, git remote add origin, and that'll be git at github.com, learn with json, make video with code.git, then we can git push origin main, and there we go. Okay, so now that this wow, is going... Bad. You're also quite fast to, to type and uh, no typos. <laughs> I have a lot of practice with that particular flow. Um, so, wait, why didn't my push not work? Could not read? Oh my god, my everything has broken. Like, oh, no. what is... For real, how did you lose everything? <clears throat> what up, chat? There was a typo, get it, GitHub is wrong. 
Oh, I said gith at GitHub. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna get oh, okay. remove. Okay, I, we spoke too yeah, soon you know, with I, my. I, now I I fear that um like if you run yarn create video that it's just gonna delete your whole whole computer. Um, I I'm not aware. <laughs> so that's that gonna be the end. It'll be the like no. something <laughs> like that. That um like nobody has reported that. But I mean, if you figure this out. Um, no, there's there is let, zero let chance, <laughs> the, zero chance that this was your code. This was absolutely my rickety setup. Um, one of the the side effects of running the show is that I install and uninstall all sorts of software twice a week. <laughs> so, so my computer tends to be a little. Um, I I, yeah, I yeah. push it hard. Um, okay, so let's try that one more time. Okay, there we. All yeah, right. So like <laughs> Jesus. Like all, all these tools that use like Ruby, like Fastlane, Homebrew, they always break for me as well. Um, okay. It's really hard. So now this works and I should be able to run one. Is that right? Render video. Yeah, Here we so go. Now you can click on the left on render video and then you should be able to press run workflow. And you, you know, you can even like customize it, um, customize the color and the text. Um, so now you uh, refresh the page, I think. There it goes. This is and unbelievably cool. Like I, I got to get Brian Douglas back on here to talk more about this workflow because these <clears throat> these Git actions are so cool. Um, brew doctor. Ooh, I could brew doctor. Let's see what happened over here. Still doing that. Okay. Now I'm afraid to touch it because this is still running. Okay, so this I is running. I'm gonna click in here. And adult supervision here. I 100% need adult supervision. Um, okay. Installing FFmpeg. Installing dependencies. That's all good. Okay, so that's fine. What happens if I run Brew Doctor? Oh boy, look at this mess. Look at the... <laughs> so, do you ever just look at your computer and you just think to yourself like, what have I done? <sighs> okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Like once it's, um, once it's effed up, then it's, uh, <laughs> it's hard to fix it. Just and, burn and, it down. Uh, yeah, it ha same happened to me on my, um, Actually, on the computer that I am on right now, but if it uh, helps you, um, or like if it makes you more happy, I also just had uh, big computer problems. I like uh. I tried to use a completely different computer, and uh, it just like the displays went black, and so now I am staring down at a laptop. So, <laughs> um, also sorry that I'm not uh, staring at the webcam. It's because <laughs> No, it's all all good, all good. Uh, Henri, that is really funny. The computer looks back. It's like, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. That was my fault. Um, okay, so so this ran, and it says it was complete. Everything did what I wanted. Where did it upload to? Um, so click back on the Actions tab. Actions um, tab. I don't know if there's like a faster way to do it, but... And now click again on the title. It um, should be, there should be an art type art. Now scroll down. Um, Just scroll down on the page and see there's like oh, an art type That's cool. Okay. And then that opens over. Wow. My downloads folder looks like trash. Let's. How about this? I'm going to bring this over here. So here is the, the video. Let me make that smaller so that it's, oh boy, make this smaller. Okay, so this is the video that we just exported. So that's extremely cool. All right, so let's, let's do this. Let's just use this workflow on GitHub. And it'll be a little bit slower, but it's probably actually faster than me trying to fix homebrew on stream. Um, so instead, yes, and also it's uh, it's like what what you see is what you see is what you get. Like what you see in the preview, um, it's gonna be pretty much the same if you export it. 
Cool. Okay. So, so with that being said, then we do know we've got over here. Um, if I yarn start again, did you remember how yarn works? No, you didn't. Oh boy. I'm gonna have to just burn this whole thing down and start over. But here we go. We've got um, we've got our remotion player uh, running here, and we'll be able to kind of edit the timeline there. And over here, I have. Let's look at the files themselves. So I have uh, an index. This index includes video. Video. Yes. So the video it's it's uh, basically the the entry entry file. This is where you can uh, define compositions. So a composition is basically a component, um, but we annotate some data like frames per second, duration, width, and height. Okay. Um, and you can give it some default props because the idea is that you can parameterize everything and um, render the same video with different props. Okay. And so if, I, if I'm looking at this to, to just kind of map what I'm looking at here to what I'm looking at over here, a composition is mapped to these layers here. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, yes. So the, the Hello World composition, uh, it actually uses the other two compositions, um, but you can define them also separately as a composition. So you can work on just one single component um, and not have to, to worry about uh, the rest. It's like, sto it's like storybook. Mm -hmm. Where you can like just render a single component and just work on that, and then yeah, it yeah, later. that's very cool. Okay, so then in here, I have all of these bits. So let's look at Hello World. And Hello World has. I'm gonna collapse this down so we can see more of what's going on. We pull in some pe some pieces from Remotion, um, and then we have our actual component. So logo, I'm assuming, is like. That's got a little bit of stuff going on. Okay. And then we have the Atom. And that's an SVG with a little bit of use video config. Okay, so this is all, it's all kind of, it's, I, I can sort of see what's going on, but I'm not 100% clear on how we actually use all of this. So, so here's what I'd love to do. Um, I would love to uh, make like just switch this over to a view of like, let's use, um, I have, I have some files we can use for this. So let's take a look in the learn with Jason repo. If I can get to it. Okay. So in here, I'm pretty sure we have some SVGs that we can use. Do I not have SVGs? Yeah, SVGs, PNGs, um, whatever works on the web, you can use. PNGs, okay, maybe, yeah, maybe we can use a PNG then. Um, that'll probably be a little bit easier. Is there a big one? Yeah, this is probably fine. What about like, let's look for a PNG. Is there a bigger one? Yeah, That's... these are like great things that we can use. Okay, so let's, let's use this one. So what I will do is I'm gonna move this over into, um, I guess for now I'll just drop it right into the source folder and we'll move it around as needed. Um, and then I'm going to close and reopen this so that we don't get the dimmed, like, get ignored thing. So let's... Sounds good. And then if you want, you can, like, delete um, all the Hello World stuff. Okay. Um, and we can start from scratch. Okay, um, perfect. So I'm going to start by getting out... Let's get Hello World logo and subtitle out of here. And then I'm going to remove... Delete all the compositions all the compositions and just like leave an empty fragment and the the hello world tsx and the hello world folder um then you have like a blank video gone 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 okay and so that brings us back to empty 
Okay. Yes. Um, okay, so now you just create some React component somewhere, create a new file, um, create React component and export it. It can be okay. empty for now. So let's call this one, um, do like a spinning loop. And I'm going to do going to do TypeScript and I'm going to regret it. Let's, uh, so I'm going to do export default function spinning boop and that's going to return um, I, for now I think we can just do a image source. Is that going to work? That's probably not going to work. Um, so it's not going to work but I I've tried to help you by giving you some ESLint warnings. So there's an ESLint plugins which will tell you um, what's not going to work and uh, and okay. uh, why not. So okay, this this Function warning component. actually you can uh, ignore. I I think you're just like using a different. We can just make that go away. I think that. So actually, I might want to remove this rule. Oh, it just removed the default and... Oh, it doesn't let me name if I do that. All right, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Missing return type on function. This part I don't... What is, what's the return type on a function? Is it like react.fc? Uh, I think like react .node. Um. Okay. So, oh, that yeah, makes, that makes it happy. Um, for yeah, the... sorry about that. Actually... Um, so it's a good note. I, I might want to remove this uh, rule because it's actually not. Um... Oh wait, don't, don't you don't have to import image? <laughs> oh wait, actually, I don't have to import to, it. Um, you don't have to import it. You should be able to just um, run ESLint safe, and it will automatically import it. So if you want to try that out. Okay, so I run ESLint. Save, you um, said? Do you have like ESLint autofix auto enabled? Oh, maybe. Okay, okay but uh, <laughs> wait a moment. Sorry, it was uh, too fast. So the first thing is, um, yeah, you should use the imp, but if you just like uppercase the I and uh, you don't, so you can import it, but if you don't import it, um, um, then ESLint will also automatically auto, auto saved, which is nice. It. Don't reference local assets by string. Okay, so then I need to, what, import? So you just need like import boop from, and do exactly that, yeah, and then source equals boop, and then that's gonna work. Hey, look at that! I wrote TypeScript, everybody. Okay. Um, nice. <laughs> so this this doesn't actually spin right now, but it does exist, and it should um, it should give us an actual image when we look at it on the screen, which means then I can yes. do one of these. So if I import spinning boop from spinning boop and I do a composition, then it's, uh, yes, it gets an ID and I can make that whatever I want. So I'll call it spinning boop. And then what else yes, happens in sir. here? I need the component. I'm just using your TypeScript autocomplete and showing why it's worth doing TypeScript. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, duration. because this is like uh, TypeScript because um, it does like a lot of validation and like helps you figure out what to do. Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, this is very, very cool. Um, so we get a height and then it looked like there was a width. And then, whoops, what else is in here? Um, do I need any of these other things? No, the other ones are okay. With with the props thing, you could uh, parameterize the video. Okay. Um, then with the lacing components thing, it's actually pretty cool. It's a new feature from Webpack where it doesn't compile your component until you like click on the left thing on the sidebar. And then you use like an uh, dynamic import and React suspense, um, and that makes it faster to start. But uh, it's too advanced. Okay. Okay. 
So yeah, that's fine. We can we can skip that from here. What? Uh, okay, so it's a it's a TypeScript thing. Um, so what what I would recommend? Um, just use like the different syntax to define a component. Um, like export const um, spinning boop um, colon reacts.fc equals arrow function. Um, but yeah, I, um, I should loosen it up a bit actually, because what you're doing is like perfectly fine. Okay. It's not unhappy now. So I, that, that works. Uh, then I get duration and frames. And so I guess these values kind of vary. So if I want 30 frames per second, which is a standard video length, then the duration of my video should be like the number of seconds times the FPS. Is that right? Yes, correct. So if we want so, like a yeah, four second like 30 clip. Frames per seconds. Is, it, is this the right, like what's what's the right amount of frames per second in terms of you know, this, this particular approach. I think 30 is uh, totally fine. This is what most YouTube videos are. Um, most likely also what the frame rate of the Twitch stream. Hmm. Then of course you can opt for 60 frames per second. And you know, there's like this debate. Some people, they upload YouTube videos in 60 frames per second. Uh, um, uh, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. I don't really have an opinion on that, to be honest, but um, you can do anything you want, but 30 is totally fine. Okay. Um, and then, so if I want to do, what's a good, what's a good aspect ratio here? We can do um, what, 16 by nine is, right? So then we would multiply that times like 600. Yeah, so mm -hmm. is there an easy? So, or you can just do like... Um, 720p maybe 720 by 1280 okay it's a uh, pretty so that's hd pretty common pretty common okay so se that's 720p just going to add a little comment in here about that okay does this break in a react component do i need to nope it works perfect Hey, look at that. We can see our component now and we can see how long it is. Yes. Like there we've got our, our four seconds. And so these are frames. Um, so we can see each frame along the way. And because we set it to 30, there are 30 per second. Okay. This is all right. So this is intuitively, this is making sense to me. Like I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting what we're doing. Um, and then, oh, that's cool that it just fits. All right. All right. Okay. I'm with you. So then I guess now we need to make it do stuff, right? So how do we, how do we make that happen? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, the main thing that we are going to use is the use current frame hook. And, uh, so if you are at frame 10, it will return 10. If you are at frame 100, it will return 100. And, uh, that's basically it. You don't you don't get much more help. Okay. Unfortunately. So it's uh actually pretty pretty hard actually, but it also keeps it um incredibly you no know, unopinionated, flexible, um, no constraints. Okay, I get you. Um but uh no worries, I'm gonna help you. Um so yeah, I would just suggest suggest you to uh do const frame equals use current frame. Okay, so const frame equals use current frame, and that's going to auto import from Remotion. No arguments there? No, should be fine. Okay, is there a way to get the total number of frames? Um, yes, so you can do use const config equals use video config. Okay. And yeah, if you can, if you want, you can log it and uh, you will see that it's exactly the data that you have just defined. Um, it's width, height, and the, the dimensions. Okay. 
So then we can do something like um, we've got our uh, percent complete. This will be a, a number between zero and one based on um, the frame. Yeah, not exactly. So it's, no. So what, what you just did is like you calculated the, the current. Um, oh, you're totally right. Time in seconds in seconds. So um, so yes, now you have the right. The OK. So then what I can do from here is I could do like, if we go really rudimentary, I can do a style component and I could do a like, uh, let's see, transform. And that could be rotate. Is this gonna work? Maybe, let's try it. And I'm gonna say percent complete turn. Does that work? Let's. Uh yeah, wow, you just teached me uh, about the turn keyboard, but Hey, oh, um, look at it go. Wow, nice. Yes. So, so basically okay. this this is <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite that, little That's the whole thing. You just uh, learned it and now it's just uh, we have to practice a lot. Aha! Okay. Um I'm yeah, I'm like super excited about this. I love <laughs> What's up, Luke? I love those coins and I love that you found the marquee. Aha! Behold my bucket! <laughs> Aha! Behold my bucket! Oh, we got a like we got a bucket loop going. Okay, um, but so this is really exciting. So then the the other thing that I'm curious about here is we figured out how to do animation. Um, what I don't see how to do yet is how I would do positioning. So the composition is is one size all right i think i need a but right provision here <laughs> but right now i have this boop and this image is is kind of absolutely positioned at the the left it's it's full size in the image so how do i go about changing positioning and stuff like that um yes so actually i think it's uh inside a a flexbox container and it's just on the left because well, by default, CSS puts things on the left. Um, oh, so so the video is a flexbox container, like the composition is a flexbox container. Um, yes. Okay. If you you can use there's an absolute fill helper component, um, which everything you put inside is absolutely positioned. Okay. But by default, yeah, it's like uh, it's like a website where. So I don't it's just. I don't need to do anything special. Like I like this here, this could be everything that I use from Remotion and I'm going to get videos out of it. If I'm to just kind of take this, this is a fascinating formatting style that it's got here. Um, but so I, so if I do a, let's see. So, okay. So then what I can do is if I have my, my spinning boop, then I can make this into a div and my div is going to have, um, do we have access to like CSS modules or anything in here? If I wanted to write just plain wow, CSS? CSS modules. Um, so you, you can create a CSS file and uh, import it. Okay. Um, that's going to work, but CSS modules, I haven't checked. Um, and I don't use them personally. Um, yeah, no, no worries. But I'm, I'm kind of like classes and then import CSS. Yes, absolutely. It's going to work. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do all this at the top level. So let's do styles.css and then we're going to do import styles.css. Is that going to work for me? Didn't explode at least. So that that's a good sign. Um, and then I'm going to change this to a class name of spinning boop. I'm going to take this. Oh, I can't really, can't really do that part out. Um, okay. That's fine. Oh, you know what we can do? That's fun. I'm going to do, all right. I'm going to do something a little bit fun here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a variable. Oh, interesting. And we're going to set it to percent complete and then I'm going to take this part out. Are you going to argue with me? 
I disagree. Um, so I don't, I don't use CSS variables. I don't. Um, what's going on? So it's probably TypeScript who is. Um, yeah, I think. With you. I think. And, I think uh, you're right. Here, yeah, I'm just like using regular React types, um, Node types. Um, so yeah, I'm. I'm not sure if you could do this in like a regular React app. Um, it should. I mean, it should just but, work, right? Yeah, but what you're about to do now, um, this. Um, might very well work. I don't. Can you like uh, control the CSS variables from uh, from JavaScript? Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's really really cool. Oh, okay. Um. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this over here, and then we can do like a do a turn like that. Um. And then if I'm right, there it is. So uh, what I've done with this video container now is I've put it up here so video container and then i'm going to make this one display flex so that i just have like i'm basically making a box on my page and i want this one to be justify content center and we'll do align items center and now we have a um i'm gonna make this width 100 percent there we go okay so now we've vertically centered our our image here and i'm going to change all that and then I can also make like let's do this as a um, do a white background for now okay that's good and then if I want to do a um, like a, a gradient I can go over to the learn with Jason site and there's a gradient here that we can that we can pull out so I'm gonna grab stop helping But yeah, it's great. Um, you're like exactly how, how I imagined, like uh, how the users would use it. They would just like immediately jump on all the web technology stuff. Um, oh, okay, it's actually React. It's, uh, I use uh, CSS variables. I use linear gradient um, uh, in, inside my video. So yes, uh, it's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love... I didn't uh, even test it with, uh, with that, but... Like uh, it's just it's, it's so uh, much fun how much you can do with these, right? Um, because I can take something like this, and then I can come down here and get I need what my pink, yellow, blue. So let's grab those, and I can drop these in here. And so now we've got our yellow, and we can get rid of that one get rid of those and now we've got like a pink yellow blue and then I can make my background gradient and so what I should be able to do over here now there we go so now I've got a um, like a gradient going on and then I can make the image itself let's do a width of I don't know uh, we'll call it 30% okay that that makes me happy and then I, you know, may, oh, maybe I want to make this stand out from the background a little bit so I can do like a box shadow. And this is going to be gross, so nobody judge me, but no, no movement, but we'll spread it like 20 pixels and then we'll do white. Oh, gross. That's not what I wanted <laughs> at all. Okay, oh, you fine. You can use a CSS filter. If you remember the syntax, it's like filter. Oh, yeah. Colon, um drop shadow and then you put in the same but you might have to google if it's correct yeah i'm gonna have to okay so css png shadow filter how does this actually work drop shadow i think is it just this filters url drop shadow where's that coming from I don't want to do it like I don't want to oh, use. Oh, that's like for Internet Explorer six or something. <laughs> you don't need that. Filter drop shadow. I think this will work. Okay, so drop shadow, and then we go zero zero, twenty pix white. But I think it's like drop dash shadow. Is it? Um, 
Oh, it is. Oh my goodness. All right. Nice. We are we are learning things today. I'm so happy about this. Okay, so let's also do like a little bit of extra spread. Now that didn't work. All right, fine. <laughs> But that is, I mean, that's like incredibly cool stuff, right? Like how, how cool is it that we can just do something like that? Um, and so now this would be like a video if I wanted to make this a video. Uh, and, and if I wanted, is it, what's the stacking order on these? Like if I wanted it to be uh, RGB, we could go 255. Is that right? That's wrong. Oh, is this, is this something you can do? Like, yeah, you can stack are, your backgrounds. Are the commas in between? Don't you need like um? Th this is the oh, new wow. RGB syntax. Um, oh wow! But why am I? What am I doing wrong? It's like you're, you're also teaching me a lot of things. <laughs> it's my favorite thing about this show is that it's just like nonstop. Everybody is learning from everybody. Uh, why doesn't that work though? No, I just, okay, that just doesn't work. So I'm just going to, I'm going to forget about that because I'm sure it's something. Wait, now what's broken? Oh, I didn't hit the play button. Okay, so we've got, I mean, we've got this nice little thing in here. And then if I want to add text on it or something, the text that I would add on it is really whatever I want. And I would just say like, yes. And then I can give this a class name and we can do something like, um, let's do, call it title and then we'll give it a style and the style will be like, and we can do like a bunch of these, right? So we can do um, like title position and we could do something like, uh, the height and we know the height so I could just do it against 100% or something and so we can start at minus 20% how would we do this we what I so here's what I want I want it to be it starts 20% off screen and then ends at the middle of the screen so mm -hmm. Okay, so how I would, so the middle of the screen, um, the middle of the screen, I, I think it's it's good to have that as a default. So um, like wrap it in some ab absolutely positioned fill and uh, add like justify content um, and the line items so that the text is in the center. Yeah. And then I would uh, work with with transform and translation, I think. Okay. Um, so let's try. Um, yeah, you can do like minus 50% or you can do um, okay. absolutely using the the values that you get from use video config. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we have a request from chat that I'm going to do before we do this, which is they want to see this rolling across the screen. So let's make that happen. Um, we can go uh, with the... Let's just, you know what we can actually, you know what we can do that'll make this easier? Let's just set the percentage amount on here. So we can do um, percent complete, and then we can set it to percent complete, right? And then uh, what we can do with that is we can do something like, instead of doing this, we have percent complete here is going to be zero. And then down here, what we'll do is we can do a calc. I love CSS and we can multiply this times one turn. Okay. Now that should still continue to work. It doesn't, I broke it. Oh, because it's the percentage now. Okay. So now we can just do calculations in our CSS based on, on how, how far along this thing is. So the next thing that I want to do as we're, we're transforming is I want to do a uh, left position 
of, and we'll calculate the percent complete times, let's go with, uh, how do we want to do this? We want it to be one hundred percent plus fifty percent. And I think what that should do, if I did my math right, which I didn't. Oh, it should be um a semicolon. Oh. Between the transform and the left statement. And I think you have a comma. Yeah, so this, um, let's see, it's the cal. You see it at, at the end of, the, of line 26? It should be a semicolon and uh, not a comma. Yeah, everything that I just did was so wrong. Um, okay, that's actually oh, yeah, CSS. That works. That works. But I broke it. The part that I broke is... Oh, you need to add pixel at the end. Translate X. I can't do... Then should be... Wait, can't we translate? I thought we could translate percentages. Variable oh, cons... okay, I see you're doing it with uh, percentages. Um... Yeah, so it's calculating something incorrectly. Hmm. And that's that's definitely okay. me yes, doing it. Very good call, use the dev tools. Okay. So the percentage is changing, and that's what we expect. The part that's not doing what I expect is this rotation, which, okay, maybe we just try this without, without the, the calculations, just to make sure that I'm doing what I think it's doing. And it's not, it is not doing what I think it's doing, which means that I am screwing this up but but you know what um you know it's like really interesting that you are doing like all the calculation in css but actually i would advocate oh that God. we do the calculation in javascript so that um so if for example you have like an extra bracket that it will actually recognize that mm. and uh, later on we are going to use like a function called interpolate and we have a spring function Oh, you've got um, oh, you've got stuff for this. I so okay. I I thought I was on my own. <laughs> yeah, let's let's uh let's bring this yeah, back then. I, so I, I'll I let you like do a little bit of math in uh, CSS. <laughs> no, no, this is all this is um, all good. So let's you, you seem to want to do everything in CSS. So um uh yeah, I would I would recommend um putting the math back in JavaScript. Yeah, okay. So that we can um use the helper functions interpolate and spring. Okay, so um, if I if I want to do the same thing that I just did using interpolate and spring, what do I like? How would I do that here? Um, yes. Okay. Um, so you can you can write something like const left position um, above the return statement. Um, equals interpolate. And then, like the first argument, um, so we could put in percent complete or we can put in frame. Um, both is okay. Um, okay. So let's put in frame. And then you. Oh, so we would need to add um, code. You specify is that right? what is the possible range for frame. So then you put in a tuple, like an array with two elements, and you say zero, comma config dot duration in frames okay and then you say um what do you want to map this array to so we want to map it from the left of the screen to the right yeah um so what would make sense is that you pass in another tuple zero comma config dot width Okay, so I what I want to do is uh, do like a negative 0.2 and then a config dot width times, or wait, that's not right because it would be, 
Um, so if you want to do it in percentage, you can do zero comma 100. Or if you want to do it in absolute pixel, you can do zero comma um, the width of the composition. So that, that'll give us percentages because, so what I'm thinking is I want it to be off screen and I want it to like roll across, right? So that's, that's yes, kind of okay. my thinking yeah, that here. Makes sense. Okay. So that gives us, so then I, I just set left. Um, yeah. Then you say, yeah, you just, then you just add the left, um, times 100, I suppose plus percentage. So that um, needs to go in and then this needs to yeah. be a percentage. Yes. Okay. So then assuming I didn't typo any of that. Okay. So that did, that did mostly what we want. And then I need to add this, uh, this transform back in. So we'll do the transform and we will rotate, um, percent complete turn. There we go. Boop and tumbleweeds, y'all. All right. Nice. <laughs> there we go. Um, one thing, so right now it looks like pretty linear. You could um, pass into the interpolation function and uh, easing, for example. Um, so it looks a bit um, smoother, for example. Easing. So okay. This is like an object. Okay. Um... And uh, then you say um easing and, and is this an, are there helpers for this um yes now you can type uh an uppercase easing with an uppercase and it should find that here yeah and uh oh now, so you can do like a cubic base here if you if you want um, or easing dot ease these things. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do an e let's do an easier one. Let's do an in out. And is this a function or is it? Um, no, I think you you should not call the function. Okay. Did it come in? Here's easing. Doesn't like that. What have I done wrong? Oh, okay. And then maybe it's um. Okay, then maybe you have. To these are all a bit uh, different and so actually what I prefer to use is um, the spring animation so this is why I don't use the easing so much but okay um, let me quickly see how you're supposed to use that so you, you did an easing dot in out mm -hmm. oh okay so <laughs> this is a uh, wrapped function so you should do easing dot in out and then put in another easing function so easing in out and then easing dot ease i think that's <laughs> how you make it work like that yeah i think that's it um although i get yes, it yes um okay that makes sense but uh, yeah, this API is actually straight up stolen from uh, React Native. Okay. Like line by line, um, yeah, but it just works nicely. It is. It, this is like pretty slick, um, and you know I can see how we could pretty quickly start putting together some, um, you know, multiple instances of this, and we can make them bigger and smaller, and suddenly it looks like a, you know, a, a crowd of boops rolling across the screen at different depths. Um, there's actually, if, if uh, those of you who are subscribers, and I, I just saw Andy Brown, thank you so much for the, the sub. Um, you can spam some, some corgis right now, and we can actually see an instance of that that is done with CSS, but uh, a storm of corgis across the screen. But, uh, but yeah, so this is, I mean, I'm, the wheels are turning here, right? Because this, is, this didn't feel particularly out of the, the realm of like, what I would do to build a component anyways, right? Um, here they come. <laughs> Here's the stampede. 
Uh, so we could do something similar to this, where you can see like some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. It gives us a sense of depth. And now we're we're very quickly building a whole kind of scene out of this. And it's all done programmatically. Um, that to me feels really powerful that I can just do that with some code because you know building that thing with CSS was a uh, it was a pain in my butt but uh, I love it and I would love to be able to do that even more easily using something like this which is really exciting and here's another thing that I just realized one of the things that we can do with videos is we can chroma key them so if I make instead of this background being a um, like I don't know what the actual color is but if i you want to like green screen it or something yeah right i can like green screen this and then i can drop this right on top of my stream and this would like overlay now so this would we can chroma key like this so really really yes, really and, powerful uh, you, stuff you know here. what actually this is a good idea but uh out of the box there is support for this you don't so you don't need to uh um have a green screen hold um, up okay so it's just so you just like set the background to transparent instead of green. Okay. Um, and now you see there's a checkerboard icon next to the play button. What? Uh, yes. So there are two ways of how you can make transparent videos. Um, one is you can just export it as a PNG sequence, um, dash dash PNG, um, and many video editing programs will understand PNG sequences. Um, there's also, um, you can export it as a transparent WebM video. Mm -hmm. um, for this thing, you need to change like three settings, which I don't remember, but uh, it's also documented. Yeah. Um, and then you can play a transparent video in the web, which you see super rarely. Right. I mean, yeah, like the potential here, you know, I hope chat, are your gears turning? Cause my gears are turning. Like I, I see so many really interesting applications of this where we can very quickly come up with an idea. And instead of having to figure out how to translate our web animation knowledge, to video animation, which is where I've been, where I'm like, oh, I could make it do this. And then I have no idea how to get After Effects to do that thing. So I have to look up a tutorial and then I have to learn all the different controls in After Effects, which like After Effects is incredibly powerful, but it has a million buttons. So I have already learned the million buttons for writing React and CSS. So if I don't have to learn another set of, of a million buttons to get similar outputs, and granted, I know that there are limitations here, right? Because there, there are things you can do with something like After Effects. Like you would have to learn a whole lot about Canvas or WebGL to be able to, to do the same things. Um, so, you know, it's definitely like I can see where the, but I can see this whole huge swath of, of options that just opened up for I need a video. Like even the one that, that I made for, for this overlay here with like me walking out on the screen in these hearts. I could have done that with React so much faster than I did it in After Effects. Figuring out how to make those hearts yeah. like randomly so if generate. You to, like change the, the color of the hearts to yellow, then it would be quite hard in After Effects, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, I would have to like basically remake the entire video. It'd be a huge pain. So, um, the, like, what I think I would be able to do with this if I if I had the opportunity to to you know knowing that this exists, I can see a lot of really, really exciting things that will happen much more quickly because I get to use the skill set I have. Um, so that that's, I'm excited. I think any anybody who's streaming, anybody who's working with, with video or has ideas around video, this is a very, very cool thing that's going to unlock a lot of potential. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really glad you see it like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, of course, it's really complicated. You have like a blank slate, you get very little uh, helpers um but yeah it's it's nice that you see it and you immediately immediately jump on all these things like css variables and uh gradients and image tags and web technology and you are excited to use react so um i think it's definitely like a product for you hmm. um 
and yeah for like you know there's like we are like this type of people who want to do to write every everything in react mm -hmm. um even though it's like not the traditional and fast route um but uh yeah of course we want to push this and um uh you know in <laughs> in the future uh I, I think we might be right to do everything in, in react yeah i think i mean i think the the thing that i always take away from this is that what we really want to do is we want to we want to use the right tool for a given job and and what the right tool is depends very much on who you, the person is trying to do the job if i have you know 10 years of of writing code for the web and three months of, of making video and After Effects, it doesn't matter if React is actually more cumbersome or, or kind of a, a workaround to get to video if I can do that in one day versus doing the After Effects thing in a week. Um, for somebody who's good at After Effects, yeah, this is a, this is a, a long walk for a, <laughs> for, for a video. But, you know, if you already have the skill set and you're already solving similar sets of problems, this is a great way to open up a door to get things done quickly using the skills you already have. And I think that that is what I find really exciting. You know, I, I do think that there's there is a tendency to try to use uh, it once you once you have a hammer, everything becomes a nail. I think React is definitely one of the biggest hammers out there right now. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, like, there are definitely instances where it makes sense to turn a video into a nail like I need to get something done quickly. I can do this in 15 minutes because I know the the animation properties that I need to make that thing work. The the fact that you've got this interpolation set up, um, this alone is huge because I was going to have to do all this math myself in CSS to figure out how to get it, you know, start 20% and end up at 20% over and, and all that stuff. Like I could have gotten there, but oof, so much easier to not have to. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, there are more things to to explore if you have some time. Um, yeah, we few, few directions uh, we could go. So we we could explore how to um, parameterize the video so that you can make a video where it's like um, you can call it via an API or via the GitHub action that it's like with the click of a button you can every time generate a different video. Mm. Um, we could like explore the the Spring API that is in there. Um, I think spring animations are like generally superior to um, this interpolation and easing stuff because okay. uh, it looks just so much smoother. Yeah. Well, let's um, let's do that. So here's here's what I think we should do. Let's um, let's play with springs. And the way that I would like to do that is I'm going to. Can we create like another layer so that we can keep both? Like just another composition um yes yes let's do that and then um uh that's perfect because then i can also show you a concept called sequence so that's basically um so you are isolating another um so yeah nice now you have the you have two compositions with the same component that works um, could be useful if you want to have like the same video but in different sizes yeah I, I uh, do I think if I was going to do some different things in here I would uh, I would change up the way that we're doing it but because of for basically for the sake of time we've got about 10 minutes before we need to start breaking down here and I want to make sure that we have time to get it done so I'm going to get our bouncing boop in here and then this one, instead of left position, let's just turn this off for now. And we're going to keep that one right in the middle. And there it is. Okay, so here is our, our bouncing boop. So we've got this video over here, the spinning. This one is bouncing. Now, if I go to, to export these, will Remotion make two videos now that I've got two compositions? Um, no, um, so in the, the build script of npm run build, there you have to specify the composition name actually. Mm. Um, so you would just have to call it twice. Okay. But I got what you. you could do is you could, um, what you could do is you could, um, import the bouncing boop into the sequence boop and uh, make them 
um, run after each other or something like that. Okay. Okay. So let's let's use spring, and here's what I want to do this time. Let's have it uh, kind of come out to the front of the screen like it's kind of bouncing toward us, um, and we'll and we can we can use spring to do that. So if I want to do that setup, what should I what should I do to make that happen? Yes, how I usually do it is I just um, type in const scale equals spring. Okay. And then spring takes an object as its first argument. Um, then you have to pass in the current frame and the FPS. So you just type in frame, um, frame and FPS, yes. Okay. Um, of course, you could um, also pass in not the real values. For example, if you want to time shift, if you want to delay the animation by 20 frames, um, you could type in frame equals frame minus 20. Oh, I got you. you okay. Time shift. Um, but by default, the animation starts from from the beginning. And, okay. Uh, then there's config. Um, Yes, and yeah, you can leave it as an empty object for now, and then we can use the defaults. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. And you can um, just assign the style to, to a transform style. And so, like, just like that? Or like, how am I? Um, so it, it's a string, scale, and then parentheses. And then you put in the scale, yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Do I need to do, like, it, I don't have to set a from or two. It's just going to kind of do the no, thing? No, that should. I mean, let's have a look. Oh, wow. Look at that right off the bat. Pew. Okay. So that's yes. that's very pleasant that that just worked. Um. So then if I wanted to do, what if I wanted to do, like, a rotation with a spring? Can I... Yeah, sounds good. Then we can interpolate the scale. So we can say const rotation equals inter interpolate um, scale. And now your rotation will also follow the spring animation, which is nice. So I'm, interpol I'm interpolating scale. And then I need then to do an input range. So my input would be 0, zero and one. 1. OK. And my output and range then you say, um, would be 0 to 1. Because I can do it times a turn. Oh, okay. You know, so I, I would I would have done like zero to three sixty because I was not aware of turn, but um, yes, you can do zero to one to zero to one. But then the point is, uh, it's the same, so you don't need to do the interpolation at all. So you can just like <laughs> rotate. Is so now is scale like, gonna delete the whole line and? Okay. Yeah. Let's. I mean, let's do it the easy way, right? Like less less work so then i can rotate and we'll do a scale turn yes and no. i think you are not supposed to have the comma in between the scale and the rotation transform oh That's my css thing i always forget look at it go yes nice Pew. So now we've got all this personality in here, right? Like, and what an amazing amount of personality to put into an animation for that much config, right? Like, how cool is that? Um, uh, so Linda's asking, do we get these super helpful pop-ups if you don't have TypeScript set up? No. So like VS Code has TypeScript built in. So if you're using VS Code, you're going to get TypeScript help, but I think you have to have like the checker on. That's a, you know that's a great question actually. I don't know. Um, yeah, but I also I also see it like you. Um, if you are writing plain JavaScript files, um, then it will you will still sometimes get this help because I ship Remotion with all the TypeScript definition files. Um, but yeah, it's generally not as good. And um, you get like all the auto completion for the components that Remotion has built in, 
but if you make a mistake um then it will not uh, catch that and yeah i i would recommend to learn a little bit of typescript the yeah i mean like and if you want to learn typescript we actually do have a, a great episode of that on let's go over here to the episodes and let's find we've got uh, like free motion might be like a good opportunity to do that because it's like you have a typescript project um set up so like i ship everything out of the box and you get this um completion um now all you have to do is to not remove the typescript and then you're fine right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> um uh, this react.fc thing is, is a bit uh weird we had that um but actually i i might want to change it and make it a bit more loose so you don't um get this problem yeah i mean and and i feel like that's definitely one of those things it's like it, it all comes down to preference right and and we so, have the ability to turn this off if we want which is always i think important um so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to run this job again so i want to run the workflow because i just um uh, i just hold, hold on um oh no cancel oh okay wait a minute um did you in the package JSON change the composition name? I did. Okay. So I came in here and I changed now, it to spinning boop, which is, if yeah, I'm understanding nice. this correctly, the we match it to the ID. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Correct. Oh, isn't it the bouncing boop? Uh, I mean, we can do either one. I was just going to get one to build okay. on GitHub. Oh, uh, and there's a little bit more to do. So now you have to decide, do you want to either... Um, render a PNG sequence, or do you want to render a transparent WebM? Let's try the WebM and see what happens. Okay. Um, for this, um, can you quickly pull up like the Remotion documentation? And uh, so there's like three settings that you need to change. Go to techniques and then transparent videos. Yes, and uh, there you can see like a demo. Extremely and, cool. Uh, yeah, scroll down a little bit, little bit. Okay. And you see these uh, three lines of code, the set image format, um, everything. Just put this into the remotion config.ts file and you will be able to Okay, and then I'll just yes. change these. Uh, set uh, image sequence yes, false. Yes, you remove all of this. Yeah. Remove all of it. Okay. Yes. Um, one last step is in the package.json. Now you have the. Oh, actually, two more steps. Sorry. Um, you go into the package.json. You change the out.webm to out.mp4. You change it to out.webm. Okay. And uh, because you run it on GitHub, you also need to change the GitHub workflow file. It's in the .github folder. Yeah, and now switch wherever it says MP4 to uh, WebM. And, Got it, uh, okay. Now I think you're good to go. Okay, so let's push that up. Okay, so that's up. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna reload. I'm gonna rerun the job. Um, oh, wait a moment. I think if you rerun the job from there, you're gonna re-render the previous video. Oh, okay. It's also pretty It's also pretty cool that you can like run, uh, like render a previous video in your Git history that like you have version control. Yeah. Um, but you should run it the same way as you did the last time. So click on the workflow name and then on run workflow. Okay, so here. Workflow name. 
Uh, workflow name. Oh, you, uh, this is the one you canceled, I think, because it says number one. So can you click again on actions? Okay, I'm and at actions. On the left, it should. Can you like increase the? Oh, there's a select workflow button at the top left. Now press, click render video. Now you can press run workflow. Oh, it, I was just missing the button. Right. Okay, all right. Here we go. Now let's run this yes. workflow. Okay, so let's that hope for the best. Here I think it goes. We did everything correctly. And while we're waiting for that, you uh, have I, only one shot with the time remaining. Yeah, and and you know what? If it doesn't work, that's fine because we saw the other one work, so we'll be able to run through that. Um, while we're doing that, oh, thank you for the for the the bits. Um, everybody, make sure you go and follow uh, Johnny on Twitter. Uh, also, make sure you go and check out the the Remotion docs. I am really excited about this. I think it opens up some really fun doors, and I would love to see what you create. So, if you go and use this, make sure you send it to us. Like, tag us in in on on Twitter and like show us what you're making because this is super super fun. Um, on top of that, like, what else we got? Let's let's do another shout out to the sponsors. We've uh, we've had Rachel with us all day. Thank you so much, Rachel, for taking the time to do the live captioning. She's from White Coat Captioning, and that's made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Hasura, all kicking in to make this show more accessible, which I very, very deeply appreciate. Um, while you're over at the site, make sure you go and check the schedule. We've got a whole bunch of fun stuff. Uh, later this week, I'm going to do a solo episode. We're going to work on Twitch overlays, so that, you know, maybe maybe we'll even play with some remotion. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Oh, nice. Um, I've got Gant Laborde coming back. We're going to do more ridiculous stuff. I don't know if you've seen the TikTok time warp filter, but we're going to rebuild that using a webcam in TensorFlow.js. So that's going to be super fun, completely ridiculous. Gant is always a hoot. Uh, David Corshi, David K. Piano himself, he's coming back. We're going to do more on state machines. Lots of new things in that environment. Um, if you've seen previous episodes on state machines, I'm a big fan. I think they're really, really powerful. And David is kind of the, he's like, you know, Papa State Machine. So it, it'll be really fun to uh, to have him back. Um, and we're going to do more. So I don't know why. We got all state machines material. Prince is coming back. Oh, Prince. I love Prince so much. It was just Prince's birthday. Um, and just so many good things. So, so many good things are happening. So make sure you go here. Check the schedule. Add it to your calendar. Uh, Johnny, is there anywhere else people should go if they want to keep up with you? No, I think uh, Twitter is uh, where I hang out the most. Oh, actually, I have a YouTube channel where I post remotion tutorials. Okay. Um, I did um, a Spotify wrapped, for example. Okay, so let's... Um, uh, remotion, Johnny Burger, yeah. Maybe. Here, here you are. Here's your, here's your YouTube Spotify channel. Spotify wrapped tutorial. Um, yeah, so if you would like to learn to make the really crazy animations, I uh, try to show uh, more complicated examples over there. Very, very cool. All right, y'all. Well, with that, that is all the time we have for today. So thank you all so much for hanging out with us. This was an absolute blast. Johnny, thank you so much for spending your time with us today and teaching us about this. I am super excited to see what everybody can go and create. Um, chat. Stay tuned. We're going to go find somebody to raid. Johnny, thank you so much for your time, and we will see y'all next time. Thanks a lot. See you.